This is the story of a nobody. No. You walk out of a chapel. The only way forward is an old bridge. Cross it to the clearing on the other side and here Actually, a horse licks you? And you walk out of a crypt in Limgrave. This game will change your life. Good Media throws you into the action straight away and the studio responsible for the creation of an entire genre of games of course has perfected this technique. Souls likes from the most famous Dark Souls are a concept made by Hidetaka Miyazaki. Growing up in Shizuoka, Japan, Miyazaki developed a love for reading at a young age. However, his family wasn't affluent and he often had to rely on libraries and second-hand books, many of which were beyond his reading level. This led to an interesting pattern. He would encounter texts that he couldn't fully understand and had to piece together the stories from fragments. This experience of filling in the gaps with his imagination profoundly influenced his narrative style. So, back in Limgrave, I get to experience this influence. The genius of Miyazaki is that not only does he manage to use such an abstract experience to make games, but also that these experiences often relate back to you. Right now I'm in the same place of confusion as my character. Just a second ago I was in a completely different place and even though I was expecting a boss, I didn't expect the story to unfold in this way. In front of me is a safe place and some stranger. Now not only am I confused, but I'm also afraid that another thing will try to kill me. With no other options, I approach the brace. And fortunately, I don't have to lock in just yet, because our friend here is good. And the conversation ensues actually more oh, of a moment. Yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. <laughs> He said the thing, I'm maidenless. Not only am I maidenless, but I'm also directionless. Because they decided to put an obvious boss right between me and my next destination. Sure, I can skip him, but should I? I didn't let myself get stopped so soon and just made it past. At the church, one of my favorite characters greets me. That's a merchant. I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. They are so mysterious, some of them can even play instruments. And on top of that, they have a cool little camp and a mule. Their camps look so cozy and their presence really goes to create the feeling of a safe place. But this peace and safety would soon once again disappear. From the church, I decided to follow the guidance of grace. Then I followed the guidance of grace. And then I basically lost track. The world is so big, I don't know what to do. I explore a little, even reaching Caled, and meet a few people along the way. First, my stalker, Melina. Greetings. She's the one who brought the horse to lick me earlier, and now she gave me a ring. With this ring, I can summon Torrent, and in exchange for taking her with me, I get to level up. Also, she took me to the round table hold. A few more people were here, and many more locked doors. Getting back on my way, I next met my new best friend. Oh, my stars! I'm so happy to see you. I am Alexander. Haven't met such a cheerful fella in a while, so I help him out. Somewhere at this point, I came back to the church of Ellie. 
instantly somebody calls me over. This way, a woman. May I have a word? And what's up with this mist? This is Rena. a snow witch with blue skin and four arms. She appeared out of nowhere at the church and even the merchant was asleep when she's around. So mysterious. She gave me a bell to call upon spirits. But what's more important is that she grabbed my attention. And when a character grabs my attention, I wouldn't ever let their story go to waste. So I google her request line and I need to wait until we reach some other area. She now disappears. The girl in the red hood wrote Derica and second to last. I beat him pretty quickly with the help of Roger. Finally, this guy. You there? C come over here, would you? I would advise against taking the main gate into the castle. Oh, try the opening right here. Yes, that's the spirit. He looks like a nice old man, so I know I can trust him. Inside the castle, everything goes smooth. But something is starting to catch up to me. A feeling. Maybe it's the confusion or something only connected to it. I think I wasn't enjoying the experience that much. Even though I remembered how great Dark Souls or Bloodborne was. And I was sure it would change my life. So by the time I even got a new weapon and met two new people. A warrior, princess and a wizard, I didn't even have a reason to play the game. In my last attempt to please God make me want to play this game, I checked the internet for a good weapon. I wanted to play my favorite class, a battle mage. So Moonvale was my choice, the glintstone katana that can create magical waves with slashes. It can be found in the gale tunnel and I've already been close to the place shown on the map, so I'm on my way. On the way to Kaelid I noticed something. The crumbling of this world from software has a knack for immersing players into worlds on the edge of collapse. This time, the rune of death has been stolen from the Elden Ring, leading to the shattering of this divine creation. The aftermath is chaotic, demigods wage war over the fractured remnants known as great runes. The world stagnated, everybody's gone mad, and at some point we appear to help restore the Elden Ring. So, with my appearance in the Gale Tunnel, I set on a quest to restore my dignity, slay the Magma Worm and finish the game. It's a tough dungeon, but using magic, I make it. I even met an unexpected visitor. Where did you spring he from? even told me about the festival. So I'm hoping to meet him there. And finally, the magma worm awaits. I go in, almost kill it on my second attempt, and then I couldn't beat it. I hate slow, big bosses, so the final straw just broke the camel's back and I quit for a few months. Until... Come on. All right. And I finished my last video with no idea for the next one. It seems like hell of a good time to finish the game. So we are back in Gale Tunnel. I have a clear goal in mind now to beat the game as soon as possible and get the video out before the DLC comes out so I can capitalize on the hype and maybe even make it to Asmongold's stream. Get the fuck out of here. Who is this guy? With this newfound determination, for the next two hours or so, 
I struggled against the worst boss in my entire playthrough. And so many times I wanted to quit. So many times I wanted to go and continue this journey with another weapon. But finally, on the least expected attempt, I beat it. And it was well worth it. I got Moonveil, the weapon that would define my character and the entire playthrough. And I couldn't be more happy since I get to be a badass magic user, I don't need to cast spells, and that the moveset is literally from the moon. Moonveil. Now that the excitement is gone, a question remains. Why did I not find the game fun then, but now I do? My instinctive answer was that the game is fun, but I just needed to force myself to break through some point when I finally feel like I'm doing something. But I'm also doing this for the video, for my dream to make money doing things I love, so it might just be that forcing yourself to do something fun or productive is the best way to beat this feeling of emptiness, lack of motivation, because you might find it enjoyable in the end, as long as you don't hate it. I hated school, and no amount of forcing would make it a pleasure to be there. With this new weapon, I go back to Stormvale Castle. I plow through all the enemies like the absolute machine I am, and speedrun it to the boss. I even took the warrior princess with me. Now we go in. Four attempts or so later, Godric is down. This boss was where I really felt like I progressed, but difficulty-wise it was nothing. Now I approach the grandpa from before and he seems very displeased with Godric's crafting practices. Get the fuck out of here. I am happy I could free you, grandpa. That's me, buddy. The first great rune is now in my hands and I finally get to see the next area. Before I continue though, let's make sure everything that was supposed to be done is finished and activate the Great Rune. Even though the fight with Godric was nothing, it marks an important event in this story. An entrance is now open to Lyurnia. I didn't know it right now, but in Lyurnia, this playthrough would truly get magical. Maybe if I paid more attention I would have noticed, since the very entrance to Lyurnia is covered in bushes and trees, already creating a mystical vibe. But Limgrave's confusion was still lingering, and I couldn't care less. So, we know. I turn sharp to the left right away and make it to a church, where this weird guy greets me. Find yourself a glintstone key. Without one, you can't pass through the academy. And you'll never reach the Erd Tree capital. I know I need a key. Down we go to the lake to find it. Here I started thinking I was gonna hate this area. I didn't even go to the lake in Limgrave. And here, not only is there a bunch of water with strange enemies, but I also can't see a single thing. Until... I hear the voice of a young lady. Hello? Maybe I can finally find a maiden with a healthy Over spine. Here. Scoliosis seems to be a real issue these days. She tells me a very sad story, so I decided to help her. She needs me to find a thief and beat him up like the good guy I am. I explore some more and here he is. He's a thief, so I'm free to kill him, right? I'm gonna fucking poke your eyes out, fuck you up like my little bitch, maliciously, you dumb fucking re- As long as he isn't aggressive, I prefer solving things by talk. We settle this situation peacefully, and I finally return. In exchange for help, I learned her name is Raya, made another friend, and received an invitation to Volcano Manor. This is yet another time a character links me to a locked area, also painting some picture of that area in my mind and making me curious. In search of the key, I followed the highway that leads to Rhea Lucaria. By the entrance, I found a map with a meeting place drawn on it. 
I obviously knew what I would find there, and at this point, the confusion I felt in Limgrave finally wore off, and I started gaining some clarity. The ride to the key was rather long, so I allowed myself to explore a little. The fact that now I had direction opened my eyes to the beauty of Luria. Elden Ring is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played, and not in the way it's graphically advanced. Even though it took me some time, I now see that every single part of this game works perfectly together. In the case of Lurnia, the land of lakes, magic and mysticism, we are met with misty lakes, a snow witch, the academy of glintstone magic, worship of the moon, mysterious ambience, purple-bluish hues which of course remind us of magic and a crumbling world in which nature triumphs. Here I really felt like I'm in a fantastical world and the theme of the location really resonated with me. This is the true magic of Lurnia and the genius of the game, the way it makes you feel. Every area represents the stage of your journey. Limgrave is the awakening, coming to life among nature just like the spring. Lurnia takes on a more late summer vibe. Altus Plateau is next like fall, and then finally death among winter comes in the mountain tops of the giants. Music serves to set the tone of the fight or the area. Light and colors are perfectly set up to make scenes dramatic and communicate ideas to you. Every NPC is placed in this exact strategic way like that snow mysterious witch is placed in the land of magic to make it even more magical and mysterious because in my mind now those things connect like a web this level of understanding the subtleties and connections between all the different parts of the piece allows the art to communicate with you on some higher abstract level and it's even more blown out in the way Miyazaki makes you experience what the character is experiencing or the way it extensively draws from real-life mythology or everyday struggle of facing sometimes insurmountable things. This is why I've grown to believe it's not only about the gameplay. Gameplay is of course fundamental, but immersion, when you imagine yourself as the tarnished on a quest to slay gods, and this is reinforced in ways that you don't even consciously notice, makes the difference between a great game and one that can change your life. Maybe you didn't notice, but your subconscious mind surely did. We will get back to this later, but this is the reason this game truly can change your life. It seems like we are finally here. Before I go get that key, let me make sure it's not behind that big ass dragon. It is, so I lock in. And I got the key. Now, the Academy of Rhea Lucaria awaits. Psst, hey kid, do you want some more of that good shit? Check this out. A cute pet just for you, hidden somewhere in the video. Try and find it. That's going to be only $100. Wait, 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 wait. Don't leave. Look at that, what a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> the same pet is also included in the $10 option. But even better, you can share this video everywhere, like, subscribe and watch the ads if you would like to support me completely for free. Thank you viewers. Honestly, not much happened at the academy. I got through most of it until that pesky bird told me to get down and die from the Iron Maiden. This is where I got kidnapped into Volcano Manor, out of which I quickly got out and killed Radagon's Red Wolf. Then I realized I haven't met the White Witch here. I know how these games work, so before I kill the boss of this location, I'd rather make sure everything is done. So I leave the Royal Karia Academy. Now I'm looking for a castle, Karia Manor. On my way there I met a friendly giant who told me to not go into the castle under any circumstances, but you know, I'm too big of a simp to leave her like that. So Karia Manor, 
one of my favorite places in the entire game. The same pesky bird told me that the witch's real name is Rani and she seems to have a lot to do with snow and moon. Maybe that's why I gravitated towards her from the very beginning. Of course the same logic applies in every zone, but Karia Manor, according to its location near the witch in the mysterious land of lakes underneath the moon, is again made with this theme in mind, really tying together the vibe of the location and serving as a perfect gateway to the Three Sisters Rise. One of my favorite bosses also resides here, Loretta. With this crazy build she took much more than I expected to go down, so I even farmed to get my moon veil upgraded. Again and again I failed. So once I decided to gaze up at the moon before running straight in, and this time the music was hitting just right, my dodges were perfect and Loretta finally went down. There was something about this moon that resonated with me so deeply, woke me up in a way. It's like my entire time in Lurnia and everything I've experienced accumulated in its light, but this is just a single area. Elden Ring is one huge piece of art. It's in fact such a piece of art that you can enjoy it for hundreds of hours and then still live for thousands more with its influence. This game can change your life because now you've experienced perseverance and adaptation and you can immerse yourself once again as the tarnished for more of those thousands of hours. Today's music was brought to you by two main artists, the Broda, an ambient music producer whose music you could hear throughout most of the video. He's currently in a terrible situation, underage and about to go homeless. He was a huge inspiration behind some of the aesthetic of this video and I think he has some great potential. The second one is Todd Mori. Please go show them both some love and support Broda if you can. You can find their socials down below.